Welcome to Waiting in Retirement. As you know, I am Laura and I have Mike with me and we have Maple, our golden doodle who looks like a retriever, and Matilda, who is our Bernadoodle. This week's episode is about traveling with pets as we've explored this to try and understand how we can have these important members of our family join us on our travels. Hi, I'm Mike. So there's two different ways we could travel with our pets. We could potentially drive with them. Some of our pets like to drive, some of them do not. Or we could fly with our pets, which is a bit more complicated. And we'll talk about both of those. So one of the options that Mike mentioned was taking the car and taking our two 60 pounders with us. So one of the considerations that we had to look at was our vehicle. Um, fortunately for us, we do have a vehicle that's big enough that we can put the seat down so that we can take both of our pets, but we also need to make sure that they are safe and secure. So that comes with pet harnesses, you know, a dog bed, as well as having um, means to keep them hydrated. The big thing is little Maple here is only one and Tilly is two. They're still very, very young. So a travel for a trip that would be three to five days long would also be something that we would need to plan and prep for. Both of them are fairly good travelers right now, but we usually only go for a couple hours at a time. So closer to the time that we plan on going for a much longer extended stay, we're going to have to increase that to four or five hours just to make sure that they're okay. Sitting in a car long time is gonna to be tough on them. They naturally have naps in the morning. So I think morning travel and maybe even into the evening would work out really well for these guys. Fortunately, now with COVID, a lot more hotels are providing pet accommodations. So that will be one of the things to research on your travels and your trip down. Another item that we looked at through a friend of ours was actually getting a, an accommodation that comes on top of our car. So it would be a tent that can stay on top of our car. We can actually stay in places like Walmart and have room for our pets as well as for each other. I think that also would be quite fraught and it will be a very long week of traveling if we go to somewhere like Mexico. So yes, there are a lot of factors when driving that you have to consider, especially if you're gonna cross an international border like we might be, we might be crossing too. We may be going from Canada to the U.S. and then the U.S. to Mexico. So you have to plan that in advance. And Laura's going to tell us a little bit about some of the vet things that you might want to look into before you travel with your pets. So being responsible pet owners, the first thing I did when we looked at traveling was contact our veterinarian doctor. And we've been with um, the same practice for, oh God, as long as I've owned dogs, so upwards of 30 years. I trust and value their opinion and of course their vaccination and rabies shots are always up to date. The big thing was I had heard through Facebook, internet, that we should be sedating our pets. That kind of scared me because being doodles, they are a little bit on the anxious side and the thought of them being woozy and half sedated and then going through a flight was not something I really wanted to contemplate. So in speaking with the vet, they actually said that we have a couple of different options. One of them would be give them something that would be calming rather than sed sedating for them. And they also recommended to do a trial run for that. The vet can also um, provide a clean bill of health and they also recommended a reputable travel company if that's what we were looking at. Understanding that both of our dogs um, would probably have to go in cargo. So one of the things we looked at was hiring a company to transport our pets. As Laura mentioned, because they're both larger dogs, 60 pounds, you can't take them in the cabin with you. And Laura, I'll talk a little bit about those limitations uh, in the next segment. But I looked at a company called Embark, which comes and they actually pick up your dog at your house, transport it to the airport, and deliver it to your final destination. Now it's a kind of an upper tier pet transport option. 
Um, and for our two dogs, if we were to go from Ontario, Canada to Cancun, Mexico, which is a destination and I had picked when I asked for the quote, it was about $6,500 Canadian one way. So for most people, including us, uh, that's a deterrent. So we have to think about other ways to get our pets to the destination that we would like to go to. So one thing I would highly recommend is do your research. Every airline is different. The restrictions for the in-cabin as well as cargo need to apply. One of the things that we knew with ours, because the size of their pet of our pets, they're 60 pounds, a lot of the restrictions are up to 100 pounds even with the carrier. We looked at carriers and another thing that the vet highly recommended was get your animal used to the carrier, which means buying two. They're about $500 each and they can be found at some of the pet stores. And of course, you can always order online. I wanted to make sure that both our dogs were comfortable because they are both crate trained and they spend the night in their crates anyway. But I wanted to make sure that they had enough room that they would be safe. Fortunately, if your dog isn't this size and is more the 15 to 30 pounds, you might be able to take them in the cabin and it's considerably less cost. Even if you can get a carrier that can go under the seat, that's also an option for some airlines. One of the things that really shocked me was um, with the cargoes is the temperature for the tarmac. So it also depends on the airline that you're flying into, whether your pet can even go. You may find on the day of travel, the tarmac heat is too high, in which case they don't let your pet go. So Mike and I really struggled with this because they are our fur children. And how were we going to manage that? So we considered actually one of us going ahead and one of, the, of us staying behind or the opposite one of us going with the dogs and then one taking a later flight just on the off chance that they weren't able to make it. Most of the airlines have really good reputations when it comes to the safety of our pets. However, we've all heard those horror stories and that was a, something that I continue to struggle with and yet I've seen and heard of also many success stories. And I think because more pet owners are traveling with their pets, it's getting to be a much more um, normalized thing. The cost, of course, having the pets in addition to the pet carrier and any medications, as well as the trip to your vet to get the updated vaccinations is upwards to between three and $500 per dog in addition to your travel expenses. So it's not cheap. However, if it's something that you're going to do once or twice a year, certainly the thought of traveling five or six days with 120 pounds worth of canine, it, you know, it does sound better and better. Hey, tubbies. Come on. Come on. So there's certainly a lot of factors to think about. I think with the driving piece, the thing that's appealing is it's not just getting the dog to the destination. It's actually getting all of the dog's things to the destination. So if you think about toys and possible dog beds and even food, they're used to a certain brand of food. You want them to be comfortable and not have tummy issues. If you're driving, you just throw all that in the back of the car and take that with you. Where if you're flying, it could take an extra suitcase just with the dog things. And there's more cost involved in that as well. Now you could plan on feeding your dog whatever dog food you can find at your destination. And eventually if you're moving somewhere different, that's what you would do. Uh, but that's trial and error. And um, you know, you'd wanna be comfortable to start. 
So now you hear of our struggle on how to get our pets to go where we are. Like we said, we're not physicians, we're not workers for the airline companies. We're just really trying to navigate it and figure out the best way to safely get our pets where they need to be. Every airline again is different and what your vet recommends will also be different um, compared to even ours. I highly recommend you go with what your gut instinct tells you. They are your fur babies and you know them best and you know how they are going to best react to the different types of travel either by car or by air. So definitely do your research and we'd love to know what's worked for our viewers. I'm sure lots of you have traveled with pets or plan on doing it and have got some different ideas as well. So um, let's build that sense of community. If you have some ideas, certainly leave, um, leave a message down below and we can all comment and learn together on this topic. I think that's a really good idea, Michael, because again, we're so on the fence. We have really narrowed our search down to going to places in retirement that are drivable, but air travel just seems to be so much more convenient. And I'm wondering if it would be less stress on our dogs mm -hmm. overall. So please give us your thoughts. And again, hit that subscribe button because we're all learning this together. Bye for now.